Mia Moore. Mia Moore. I am love. Mia, Mia Moore. Yes, I am love. Okay. And my music is love, uplifting, positive, and message music. All right. James Calm, the guy on the bike. And they've actually locked the doors here. So I've probably got less than 10 minutes. But I thought it was going to be a, a, an interesting tour to take a look at an exhibition here at the Paul Kasman Gallery. It's titled William Copley Women. So we're going to run. This is Paris Blue. 1947, oil on board, and well, I think uh, Copley is one of the more interesting American artists that have emerged after World War II. And what does that say? <laughs> Copley, the old de Engs. Violated Violet. It's 45 by 34 inches oil on canvas. Uh, well, there's a, an interesting backstory. I think that uh, Copley was actually orphaned and uh, somehow ended up being adopted by a fairly wealthy family that made a fortune in the publishing industry. And uh, at some point he took off and went to Paris and met all the surrealists. And I think that for a period of time he ran a gallery in, in LA that specialized in the Surrealists. This is titled Striptease 1961. Oil on canvas, 57 by 35. It's titled Marching Through Georgia. I wonder if that's a allusion to Sherman's March. It's 1958, 31 by 51. Well, I think after he uh, kind of went broke being a surrealist art dealer, he decided to be an artist in his own right. And uh, kind of uh, evolved into a very, his personal unique style. This is titled Persephone 1960 oil on canvas. And I was actually looking at this background and it's kind of a like a little lace, but it also uh, makes me think of some of the paintings that Yayoi Kusama was doing about the same time. It's titled Mitzi Ross, 1964 oil on canvas. And one of the things I like about Copley is that he kind of melds a almost an outsider of naive figuration with pop art. But I think one of the things I appreciate is that uh, It's just a great painter. He's got a unique touch. This is titled Mother Figure, 1966. And now he's switched over to acrylic. But I 
like painters like Avery and uh, even Rothko, he's got a great sense of uh, his colors and laying in dry pigments on top of washes. It's titled What's Your Hurry, 1965. And this is nice because this has got a lot of uh, raw linen, but we can also see some of the uh, the drawings. It's 1965. You know, he's made some adjustments. It's like a woman at her toilet. Oh, they're giving me the eye. I saw this painting at Fredericks and Freiser maybe a year, year and a half ago. This is Battle of the Sexes. Acrylic on cotton 62 by 112. Again, you can see where he's uh, kind of washed in a very nice layer of yellow. But you can also see some of his, his fudges. Okay, I'm going to run. Well, I'm not going to have a chance to give you the titles of all these. Jeez. This is an interesting piece. He actually he does have a layer of uh, lace over the top of this. This is Under the Stars Homage to Picabia. Oh, everybody's looking at Picabia. 39 by 31. In a certain way, this is even more Pacavia esque. This is titled Outrageous Black and White Number One. Okay, they're giving me the eye. 76 by 60. I thought this was a wonderful uh, use of his layering and washing. Uh oh. Jules and Jim. Okay, well, <laughs> we're just gonna walk down this final wall and take quick views. I'm not going to give you the titles. I would say that that one is probably about 48 by 42, 36 by 30, maybe 42 by 36. It's a nice one. Martha, 1975. This one is kind of interesting, very abstract. Uh, makes me think of Peter Saul. Okay, here we've got some more assemblage or collage elements. It's got a little clock in there. Kanik 1982. Uh, I'm not sure when he died, but it's getting towards the end. But you can see the nice uh, kind of washes and thin glazes with the acrylics, and I like the dry surface. We made it. Okay, this is the last piece. It's titled Love Canal, 1980-81. And uh, you can see how, how dry the surface is. And uh, it's really let the weave of the, the linen come through. And uh, I guess this would be kind of his view of the young badass tattooed lady. She's even got her phone number tattooed on there. This has been William and Copley Women here at Paul Kasman. to get into the act. We're gonna do a quick rough cut run through of Catherine Bradford here at Sproney Westwater. 257 Bowery. Well, <clears throat> We uh, took a walk through Catherine's show last year at Canada and, uh, well, moving up the street to Speroni is a quite a wonderful uh, 
occurrence for any artist's career. Anyway, I was uh, looking at the show and decided I would do a little video. I'm gonna do a quick sweep. Well, strangely, all of these are basically uh, nocturnal uh, seascapes or water scenes, except for this piece. This piece is titled Bonfire. And, uh, well, I thought the narrative was kind of uh, mysterious. This could be some group of... Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say devil worshippers, but somebody out in the out in the wilderness gathering around the, the bonfire. Uh, just as far as the paintings go, I would say that uh, like, uh, I've been watching Kathy's work for years and years, and I think that uh, she really has kind of broken through to a new level. The other thing I was going to say is that. Uh, I think a lot of these works might be pressing the upper scale range that she's ever worked in. I think maybe one of the largest pieces she had done in her last show was something like six by seven feet or something like that. And uh, so several of these pieces are approaching that size. This is titled Shell Seeker Large Night. And uh, well, I love the way that she's got this figure and some of the other figures in the other paintings are just uh, kind of strokes of paint, but she's able to get these nice anatomical shapes very simply. Also, there's a lot of uh, pedimenti and uh, they talk about how some of this, she's building this up over months and sometimes years. Uh, I like the way that there's almost a kind of a resist on some of these sections of blue and, uh, well, she's gone over and kind of worked in these in various shades of blue from phthalo blue to ultramarine blue and uh, Maybe French ultramarine, even some violet. Here again, we've got a nice, uh, simple figure. But, uh, well, Kathy's very confident with her brushwork. Also, uh, she's kind of working not only the using the brush to sort of form the anatomy of these forms, but then going in with the dark paint and kind of eliminating or carving away it with the negative space. And, uh, well, she gets a nice uh, kind of a reading of reflected light here. This is titled Moon Jupiter 2016, acrylic on canvas. 72 by 60. This is titled Geyser Gowns. Acrylic on canvas 60 by 48 inches. 2016. And uh, again, Kathy uses a certain amount of, uh, of abstract tropes. These uh, strips of orange on the edges. Oh, they're flashing the lights. I guess that's the signal that they're gonna shut down. This is titled Storm at Sea. It's another big painting, 80 by 68 inches. And this recalls a whole series that she's done of the swimmers. Lights out. Time to go home. Thank you, Kate. I love it, Mia. I love it. Thank you.
Thank you.